Good day, fellow investors. Now, what we constantly mention on this channel is India, 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 India. Yesterday's video about Ray Dalio showing that India will be the fastest growing economy in the next day, decade and potentially further than that. So I want to be exposed to India. I want to expose my portfolio to India. How to do that? Well, that's not that easy. It's not that you can just go on your broker's page and look at all the Indian companies traded on the two stock exchanges in India. So we have to find ways how to invest and be very careful with what we do, not to overpay something, not to invest in companies that are Indian but not related to India. So today we'll analyze how to invest in India and how to approach those investments. Let's start with an analysis of Indian companies traded on the New York Stock Exchange, then we'll look at an Indian ETF, and then we'll look at some indirect ways to invest in India, some other exposures. Just a note, my favorite investment in India is of course Amira Nature Foods, so if you haven't, please watch the video about Amira. Let's go to the list, Indian stock, American depository receipts, Indian companies that trade on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. We have 13 companies, we'll quickly go through them to see what they offer and what kind of risk rewards are there. Azure Power Global Company Limited is a solar plant company in India. They invest in solar plants, not profitable yet. I see some positive EBITDA, huge growth, and then depends a lot of relation with the government, but it's a very interesting Indian investment. High risk as all solar companies, so it doesn't, does not really depend so much on India, it has its specific risks, but very interesting. We'll probably make a video on it to see where this leads us. And second company, Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. It's an Indian company, but not really exposed to India as 80% of revenues come from global generic drug sales. So another example of a company that's Indian, but not really exposed to the Indian growth that we can expect, or, or just in a small way. Companies that are exposed to India are banks. HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank are Indian banks growing and as the middle class is expected to quintuple in the next 15 years, a look at Indian banks is a must to see how good those investments are. We'll make a video about that too, so be sure to subscribe. Not even 50% of the population in India has access to finances. That will change in the future. So very important to note. Now other companies in India are Infosys, Vipro and WNS Holdings. Those companies are companies in the outsourcing business selling Indian working power around the world. And their revenues, as you can see here from Vipro, is mostly generated abroad. So if there is a recession in Europe, in the Americas, these companies will suffer. And I don't know how fast can they replicate what they are doing onto India. So not really Indian exposures. SIFI is a small Indian company, market cap just 141 in the telecom developing business. So if you want, you can check that. Now there are also travel companies, digital travel companies, which are very interesting, very risky, but very huge potential if they manage to deliver on their goals. Those two companies are Make My Trip Limited and Yatra. Indian internet penetration is still very low in compared to China and compared to the US, but growing extremely fast. With the middle class development, again, what will explode is travel. Middle class people travel around the world, around India. So really expected to grow very, very fast. However, with these digital companies, you never know which one will explode, which one will get traction and which one will become domi dominant. Perhaps it will be like China where all of them do good, especially the bigger one, perhaps not. So high potential and you can lose everything. So, but the reward is asymmetric. So again, companies to really keep an eye on it and I will dig into them in the futures. So again, subscribe to get those videos in your feed. A company that's not exposed that much to India or was before they acquired Jaguar and Land Rover Motor Company. It's Tata Motors, so again, it becomes a global player. In the automotive industry, not that 
benefiting from Indian growth. Second company, Vedanta Limited, Think Miner, Oil Driller. So again, depending on what goes on with the prices in oil and zinc. Videocon is a very interesting company, digitalizing India's television, exposed to India, and you have to see how that digital trend of television evolves in India. The company is growing, so it's a potential good investment. Interesting. We'll check it out, as always. So, there are companies that are Indian, not exposed. Then there are companies that are Indian and exposed to India, but each one has its specific risks. So you have to really see what's the price, what's the potential, and what you can lose. And then make an investment. Compare it to your portfolio, assess everything, and then make an investment. It's not just throw my money into India. Now, the second option, which is also always good to look, is an ETF. What does an ETF offer? So let's look at the iShares MSCI India ETF. Top holding, bank, second holding, energy, then Infosys. We already said that Infosys is not exposed so much to India. So again, if you buy this ETF, you're not that exposed to India. You're exposed to a little bit of everything. Tata Motors is here and so. So again, be careful with what you... So again, when you invest in an ETF, will it really watch what you buy and if is that actually what you want to buy. ETF is called India, but a lot of exposure is not from India. If we take a look at the second holding of the ETF, Reliance Industries, that's mostly a oil and oil refinery depending on oil prices and just partly with their telecoms on India. So again, it's a Lila investment. Now, the third option to invest in India is to invest indirectly. We know India is booming, we know there will be infrastructure building, we know there will be housing, we know there will be everything that goes along with a country of 1.4 billion people going to 1.7, developing and exploding. The same as what happened in China in the last 25 years. We have seen yesterday's video Ray Dalio analysis that the best factors for economic growth are in India. So there is really a low risk, high reward potential when doing that. What will India do? They will start to need a lot of commodities, the same as China, to build everything, copper, steel, zinc, whatever you need to build a country, build its infrastructure, roads, housing, and so. So that's one option. Just a small demand in, I don't know, increasing copper demand shoots the prior price higher and stock prices of copper miners. So that's one way. Check my video on a copper miner, Nevsun Resources, which is my favorite copper miner out there. The second way to be exposed indirectly is to buy global brands that have significant exposure to India, which will benefit from growth in the Indian economy. Just to look at the top 10 brands, global brands operating in India and recognized in India is Microsoft, IBM, Nestle, PNG, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Citi, Sony, HP and Apple. And the third option is always to invest directly on the Indian stock market, but you have to be careful there because a lot of companies have very high price earnings ratio. So it's a hot market thanks to the growth, of course. It's logically everybody expects boom. But as it has been the case in China, there, is, there are booms and there are busts. The last bust in China was 2015, so be careful with that. The price earnings ratio of the Nifty 50 is 20, almost 26, price to books value very high, 3.51, dividend yield is low. So if in the very long term, the investments will be good, but in the short term, there can be anything. So this was a quick overview on how to invest in India to tell you that you have to be careful. Follow this channel in order to get more details into how to invest. We'll analyze the companies. We'll see which one is the best, how to get exposure with low risk and high reward. If you like the content, click like, leave your comments below, share your thoughts, e interesting Indian investments that I missed. Please share those. Risks, also share those. If I'm saying something stupid, let me know. I'm here to learn with you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.